Hi Dan, welcome to the channel. Thank you very much for joining us. I really do appreciate you taking the time out um, and to share your knowledge with some of the subscribers. No problem. It's nice to meet you, Mark, and nice to meet the uh, channel. Welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching and let's get started. There's a bit of a backstory to this somewhat unplanned video. For various reasons, I'm looking to upgrade my 10900K CPU. Partly because I'm a content creator, but primarily, if I'm honest, because I'm a self-confessed flight simholic. The problem is when you start to replace your CPU, you're going to need a new motherboard. If you need a new motherboard, then that's going to lead you on to different speeds of memory and so on and so forth. So you could end up with a complete system rebuild or along my lines is maybe retain the 10900K as it is and get a complete new system. When I do this sort of thing, I speak to various companies and people such as Dan. And Dan asked me what I was looking for and I said, well, probably the Intel 13900K or perhaps I've never ventured into the AMD camp before, but their latest and greatest, which I think is the Ryzen 9 7950X3D. To my surprise, although he said both of those are excellent chips, it wouldn't be his recommendation. And it was such an interesting conversation that we had. I asked him whether he'd mind sharing it on the channel, to which thankfully he's agreed. And I thought it'd be worth sharing with you. Now, you work for a company called Wired to Fire. What do they do and really what's your role there? Yeah, so we build and design flight simulators and gaming PCs. Uh, my job role is operations and technical manager, um, running the day-to-day -day side of things. And the more interesting part is the technical side of things, which is designing and creating specifications for whatever the customer would need, whether that be flight sim or, or normal gaming content creation. Uh, so you're like the that. guy who gets to play with all the new toys then. Yes, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I think you've got the best job in the company. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> now, as you know, we've been talking, um, I, I, I've been looking at uh, upgrading my 10900K to a 13900K. It means a motherboard change, so I am looking at a new PC build, basically. Um, and that's how we got involved. And um, you mentioned that perhaps an AMD... Uh, 7800X3D may be worth considering. Uh, I've been an Intel man through and through, right from day one. The 13900K was definitely on my target list. Um, I've never really considered AMD uh, up to this point, but I do know that the new 7800X3D chip shares a lot in common uh, architecture-wise with the 5800X3D, which was a very popular and still a very popular um, CPU for flight simming and what have you. What is it mm -hmm. that makes the 5800, 7800 so attractive? Uh, yeah, without getting too much into detail, the um, 5800X3D and all of the X3D chips share the... Um, stacked well stacked v cache as it's called by amd which is effectively the technology of adding more level three cache to the on top of the die of the cpu which effectively gives the cpu much greater leverage to access memory much faster and um means that there is a lot bigger pool of memory so that you don't have to pull from RAM so often or from your SSD, which in turn means, especially in gaming and flight simulator, you get a lot more FPS for, for what it is. Is that why the 5800 really punched above its weight, I guess? Yes, yeah, yeah. So even though it's only a an 8-core and a 16-threaded processor, it had the stacked vcache which gave it a tremendous boost over every 5000 series ryzen chip which was available at the time even the top of the line 5950 it would trade blows with that it would trade blows all the way up to the 12900k um, which was significantly more expensive yeah. uh, which is why it was so popular so what i did is i asked dan 
um, could he do a test in Microsoft Flight Simulator, because they do specialize in flight sim at uh, Wired to Fire, could he do a couple of tests, which, which he has done. And the tests were in 1440p and 4K. It was using the default A320 Neo over London, scattered clouds, um, and your PCs were pretty much of a similar spec, I think. Dan, could you just outline that? Yes, yes. So the two systems were as identical as we could get, obviously. So it was a 3900K um, on a Asus ROG Z790H with 32 gigs of um, Corsair 6000 megahertz uh, DDR5 memory. And then for the AMD system was obviously identical other than a different motherboard. Um, so it was the 7800X3D with a MSI X670P motherboard. Um, both systems we tested with the um, latest RTX 4090 graphics card from Palette um, with a thousand watt power supply, but not that that makes much difference. They were all identical bar the CPU and the motherboard. Okay. And I got to say, I have seen the test results. And I got to tell you, I was surprised so much so that I said to Dan, could he pro possibly rerun those tests and check them? But uh, some interesting set of results, I think, Dan. Yeah, certainly was. Same thing as soon as I saw them. Uh, I instantly went back and, and retested it all again because the difference was so, so big that I almost thought we had a faulty processor. So I actually tried it on two different 13900Ks and Obviously, both results came back almost identical. Brilliant. Okay, so let's just quickly dive into uh, the results and we can talk about those. So we tested two resolutions, uh, 1440p and 4K. Um, as you can see here from the 1440p testing numbers, um, there's quite a large difference between the two processors. Uh, you've got a 1% low of 67 on the 7800X3D. Uh, and an average frame rate of 105. Um, the 13900K scored slightly less than that with a 1% low of 50 and a uh, average frame rate of 73. I mean, that's quite it, a huge difference, eh, Dan? Yeah, quite a big difference, something that we certainly wasn't expecting to see. Wow, okay. Moving on to 4K, um, as you can see, once again, the 7800X3D beats the uh, 3900K. The difference drops down due to the game becoming more CPU bottlenecked at this point. Um, and as you can see, you've got a 1% low of 65 and an average of 98. So it's not a massive drop. Um, and then you've got the 3900K, which has a 1% low of 53 and a average of 76. The funny thing here being that the 3900K has very, very similar numbers in 1440p and 4K, which means that we're probably running into some kind of CPU bottleneck here. We also recorded a various other different um, temperatures and wattages and utilizations across the computer while running these benchmarks. Most things are very similar. RAM is pretty much identical. Um, the main areas where we see a difference is in temperature. So the um, 7800X3D runs significantly cooler than the 3900K. So we have wow, an average that, of 30. That's clearly evident, isn't it? Wow. Yes. Yeah, so the 30, uh, well, the 3900K ran what nearly 20 degrees hotter than the um, than the uh, 7800X3D and also the amount of CPU that the uh, sorry the amount of power which the CPU needed to run the benchmark was also quite a lot higher so it was 55 or 57 watts sorry on the 7800X3D and it was all the way up at 89 um, for the 13900K so there's obviously a difference there as well yeah. everything else was pretty much the same as we would expect. Um, 
Although the so, um, 3900K was running uh, considerably hotter, still 55 degrees C is not a bad temperature really for a CPU, or am I wrong? No, 55 degrees is well, well inside our safe limits. Um, these processors are designed to run up to 100 degrees without any problems at all, really. So 55 is well inside our, our comfortable range, especially for gaming. We even do, done some testing on X-Plane uh, 12, which also gave similar results. So if you're using X-Plane 12 or any of the other simulators, in fact, you'll see an increase um, in performance. Well, Dan, as we're talking about the 7800X3D, there's an elephant in the room, and that is the reports that so some of the chips or motherboards or something, I'm not quite aware of all the details, have been burning and uh, are creating problems. What is the story on that? And should anybody considering this CPU be concerned? Yes, yeah, so there was some reports that the 7800X3D was, was burning. Um, it, I'd like to say, first of all, it wasn't the, um, the CPUs which were actually causing the issue. It was a motherboard problem. Um, and specifically, you probably heard about Azus and the way that they have been dealing with it, um, have, which yeah. was, yeah, so they were saying upgrade your motherboard BIOS, which would then void your warranty, which is obviously not the right thing to do and, and should, should have been changed. Thankfully, they've now obviously changed that so that if you have an issue with with it, or well, not if you have an issue, but to negate the issue, you should upgrade your BIOS and that's now not gonna affect any warranty and will cover you from having any future problems. Um, shouldn't be an issue in our case as we do use MSI motherboards as all of our defaults, but we do offer ASUS as upgrade options. And, and we all- And am I right, that had something to do with the voltage on the motherboard? Yes, yes, so from what I know and what I've read online, it's to do with uh, the SOC voltage, which is the system on the chip, basically, um, which controls everything. And it would overvolt. And then if it had a slight burn, there was an issue causing the heat protection to fall over. And that would cause a catastrophic failure where it would then lead to burning, not just a slight overheat. So are you saying it's safe to go back in the water? <laughs> <laughs> I would say... If you are planning on getting one, um, make sure that your BIOS is the latest version. As long as you have got that up to date, then there is no need to worry anymore at all. Okay. And uh, to put you on the spot then, Dan, would you recommend uh, the latest AMD chip, the 7800X3D? For flight sim, I certainly would, yes, yes. Yeah. For me, the clear choice, um, if you're wanting pure performance, then that is the one to go for. Great. Well, Dan, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate your insights. Thanks to Wired to Fire for allowing you to take the time out uh, to be on the channel. Really appreciate it, my friend. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you very much for having me. Hope that everyone's now had all of their questions answered about what is the best uh, CPU to go for for flight sim. Great. Thanks, Dan. Cheers, eh? Cheers. Thank you. Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I haven't made a final decision yet. Although I do find the 7800X3D very attractive in terms of price, saving me something in the region of about 120 pounds or 120 US dollars off the 13900 and probably twice as much as that off the 7950X3D chip and so on. And of course, as I do a lot of my flying in VR, well, brute force at the end of the day does count. Anyway, I hope you found it useful and informative. Thank you very much for being with me today. See you soon and bye for now.